Let's look at the residual income model where the intrinsic value per share, which is V0, is equals to the current book value per share, which is B0 here. Then we add in the PV of the residual income. So RI here will be the RI sub T will be the residual income at time T. And then we discount it using R, which is the required return on equity or the cost of equity. So if I expand the summation term, so we have RI1 over 1 plus R to the power of 1 plus RI sub 2 over 1 plus R to the power of 2 and we continue to add up all the PV of all this residual income. Now how do we compute the residual income at a certain time point? So the residual income at time t will be based on the earnings per share at time t. Then we minus a equity charge. So the equity charge will be the required return on equity multiplied by the beginning book value of equity. So it's always important to remember that we always use the beginning book value to compute the equity charge. Now, if I express this in terms of ROE, so of course, uh, no, knowing the fact that ROE, okay, at time t will be the earnings over the be uh, beginning book value of equity. So we can then express the earnings uh, per share at time t based on ROE times the beginning book value. So another way of expressing residual income is to take the difference between ROE and the return on equity or the cost of equity then we multiply it by the beginning book value of equity. Now, of course, to find the book value okay, at time t uh, and based on the previous book value, so we'll use the clean surplus relationship where the book value at time t will be equal to the previous period's, beginning, uh, previous period's book value per share plus the earnings per share for period t minus the dividend per share at period t. Now, when should we actually consider using this uh, residual income model? So, a case here could be a company that doesn't pay dividends or the dividends are not predictable or if the companies do not have positive expected free cash flows during the forecast horizon or if the cash flows are just unpredictable okay, or if the analyst focus is on economic profitability or if there's a lot of uncertainty in forecasting terminal values, especially uh, if you are using the free cash flow model or the dividend discount model. Now, when is it inappropriate to use the residual income model? Of course, if there's a lot of significant departures from clean surplus relationship, which was mentioned here. So, of course, if a lot of items bypass the income statement and they go straight to the other comprehensive income, okay, then uh, this relationship will not hold. Okay, another case is when the residual income is not predictable because its determinants like the book value and ROE are very hard to predict. Now in this example, we have Zimax uh, Co's forecast for their earnings per share as five, uh, $5 uh, for the first year and $6 for the second year. And then their forecasted dividends are $125 and $150 for the next two years. So we assume that Zimax will stop operations after year two. So this is to make our calculations easier. Just want to illustrate how the model is used. So the current book value per share of ZMAX is $20 and the required return on equity is 12%. So calculate the intrinsic value of uh, ZMAX code. So in this case, uh, if you're using the residual income model, what we'll do is we'll calculate the residual income each year. Okay, so uh, the goal here is to find out uh, what is the residual income in year one and the residual income in year two. And then uh, based on this residual income, we will find the present value and then we'll discount them back to time zero. And then lastly, we will add the book value to the present value of all these two residual incomes. Okay, now let's, uh, we have the book value, uh, which is $20. Uh, this is number is already available. So now what we need to do is find the residual income for this uh, year one and year two. So let's start. So to find the residual income for year one, Okay, uh, we will need the earnings, the EPS in year one minus the cost of equity times the beginning book value, okay, which is B0, and we have this number. So the earnings, uh, the EPS in year one is $5 minus 12% times the beginning book value, which is uh, $20 in this case. Okay, so that will be $2.60. Okay, so that's uh, the residual income for the first year. Now, uh, to find out what is the residual income for the second year, then you will need the earnings uh, per share for the second year minus uh, the cost of equity times the beginning book value for year two, which is uh, the ending book value in year one. 
Uh, however, we do not have b sub 1 here. We, we do have b sub 0. So to find b sub 1, we will take b sub 0 plus the earnings in year 1 minus the dividend in year 1. Okay, so the current book value per share is $20 plus the EPS in year 1, which is $5, minus the dividend uh, in year 1, which is $125, right? So that will be equals to 23.75, okay? So we'll be using this uh, ending book value in year 1 to calculate the equity charge for the second year. So this will be $6 minus 12% times 23.75. So that will give us $3.15. Okay, so we have the residual income for the two years. And we don't have to continue further because the company is going to stop operation after that. So which means that from this, from uh, year two, uh, after year two, the residual income will all be zero. Now uh, we have all these numbers. Uh, let's substitute them in. So this is uh, two, we, so we have 260 here and we have 3.15. So if I want to compute the intrinsic value of uh, Zimax, so the intrinsic value will be the book value, 20, plus uh, 260, divide by 1 plus the cost of equity, which is 0 0.12, power 1. And then uh, for the second year's residual income, that will be 3.15 over 1 plus 0 0.12 to the power of 2. And then uh, we'll add up and then we'll get the intrinsic value. Now, of course, you can use the tax, uh, the financial calculator to input this into the cash flow worksheet. So in the Texas VA2 calculator, I'll press uh, CF uh, to get into the cash flow worksheet. I'll reset the cash flow worksheet. And uh, of course, uh, the CFO, which is the initial cash flow at time zero, there'll be 20. So I'll gain 20 here. And then I'll scroll down to CO1, which is uh, 260. Enter. And CO2 will be 3.15. Enter. And then go over to NPV, your I will be equals to 12%. So enter 12, scroll down and press compute. Okay, so there we have it. This is the intrinsic value for Zimax 2483. So we will then compare the intrinsic value to the market price of Zimax if it is publicly traded. And then we can determine whether it is it uh, undervalued or overvalued or is it value valued. So let's note a few things. Now, if I were to take the intrinsic value and minus the current book value per share, so that would be $24.83 minus $20, so that's uh, $4.83. So this $4.83 here represents the PV of the residual income uh, that we expect from the company, okay, which is basically the PV of these two numbers. Okay, so in other words, if you have a positive uh, difference between the intrinsic value and the book value that shows that we expect positive uh, residual income in the future. Okay, so that will add some value to the company's uh, share or intrinsic value. Now, of course, another way how we can express this is to take the intrinsic value over the book value. So that's uh, 24.83 over 20. So that will give us 1.24. Okay. So when you, get a, when you get a price to book ratio, or in this case, we call this a justified price to book multiple that is greater than one, that means uh, it shows that there is potential growth okay, or value added in this company.